Hello, Better Together fans, members of the Heel Squad. Kevin Undergar here, Mr. Maria Menounos. That's right. Sitting in for Maria. Um, talk about that a little later, but for now, let's uh, let's get that quote of the day, Kelsey Meyer. I got you. You guys, this one's a good one. That I'm going to turn down the music a little bit so you can hear it super loud and clear. Okay. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. And that is from Mahatma Gandhi. It's a good one, right? It really is. You know, and, and we keep, my goodness, like the last three guests on the show, it's, everyone says give back, give back, give back. And, um, and that will, you know, cure depression and just, or even help you gain more in your life. Why is it that you, Kels, why do you think people are resistant of it? Do you think people think it's like easy for mm. you? Is it like easy for you to say or I try to give all the time and all I get back is grief? I think it's the I try and give and I don't get anything back sort of idea. I think when you become too fo like too focused on it and you don't just let it be, I don't know. I'm <laughs> Steven, what do you think? I think that people... There's been a definite shift in, in American culture where people never feel like they're to a point where they can start giving. Oh, They're not to a point with their own lives. They're so worried that like, oh, I can't give because I can't afford to because I need to worry about me right now. And then later I can give. Mm. But don't I you think, think the, the persona is people don't think they're ready. But don't you think, Stephen, too, like in that same vein, when they do try and give, it's like, I'm not getting anything back. I think you're right about that. And then I think that sometimes we don't get back um what we want like maybe right. we won't we don't get the gratitude right we don't get the big bouquet of flowers we don't get that and then it's like you hear that i do everything for everyone no one does anything for me mm. or i'm tired of helping people you know that's been my problem my whole life but i i, I will say Stephen, and you know being on your journey with you for almost a decade and see you go through your 20s I saw the greatest shift in you. Mm. And by the way, Steven's literally probably one of the most brilliant minds out there, you know, um, it, as far as uh, what he can do, build, fix, repair. Uh, he does nothing he hasn't been. And Phil Svitek, who worked before, same thing. I mean, I've been very blessed to have brilliant people around me. But Steven, definitely one of a kind brain. But I, I saw a shift in you when you started sharing that with other people more. Mm. I mean, you always did it for me because you worked for me and that was fine. But then... When I saw you shift and start help last like three, four years, really lean in and start helping the young hosts at AfterBuzz and shepherd them. And then you, giving your talents. I know right now, Jayla was one of the first um, trans hosts that, you know, we ever had at AfterBuzz. She'd been there for a while and you just, Stephen just did this incredible commercial for her cosmetic line. And uh, I thought it was like a big giant paid gig. It, it was a almost a, you know, almost a six-figure ad. It looks it's like beautiful. And he was like, "No, I just did it for Jayla." And I'm like, "Ah!" Oh. And I, I mm. was so happy for Jayla, and I'm just so happy for Stephen because yeah. I don't know. I just think there's a lot of goodness. But Stephen, I've seen your life. The more you've like not bottled up that talent for mm. and sat on it, and the more you shared it. Um, I don't know. I feel like I've seen the blessings come back to you. Yeah, I mean, definitely in a lot of ways. And I think that I've, I've been extremely fortunate to have mentors in you and Maria to kind of teach me these lessons because as I get older, I realize more and more that money's just a tool. And it's like, mm. I would rather do something for somebody who's going to be appreciative than do something and get paid 250 bucks and have them treat you terribly. You know, yeah. like it's, it's more beneficial, more valuable for my heart to like do something for somebody and and really like know that I've helped somebody out. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of profit, ongoing profit. So I think it's kind of a stay the course thing. But I, yeah, if listen, I don't know. You, we just, there's a reason we're hearing it from so many, mm -hmm. whether it's Gandhi or whatever. It, it, there's a reason with, I think the internet and YouTube, like we're able to hear from more people Yeah. and not just the Martin Luther Kings and the Gandhis. We're yeah. hearing it more from, you know, day-to-day -day people and, the benefits i don't know give it no, a, give it a try <laughs> even I if agree. it's just going down to a dog shelter and doing something like mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. um no, i will I say that like moving back to north carolina kevin i have seen a lot of goodwill That's like awesome. oh, we nice. you know what next door is next door is like a community 
uh, posting board for like neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, anytime somebody posts there about how they're in need or whether they need something, or if it's like, Hey, we can't afford rent or I just got kicked out. I have nowhere to live. Like there's always just an outpouring of support from the community and they're always hooked up with something to help them. That's great. I love hearing that, you know, because it's too much. It's always been a lot for our family, but when I think of the, you know, the, 70s let's say you know that was kind of the end of the 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 traditional family i mean mm. you know it then it turned to you know double you know the two parents working and latchkey kids and um it just life just got faster it got harder and now like that line of it takes a village mm. it always took a village but you know when life was at a slower pace and really you just worked nine to five then you came home and Dad sat on this, you know, his easy chair with his slippers and he read the paper and he helped you with your homework. And mm. mom, you know, was working with the PTA and, you know, but life's changed. And I feel like it is a community now. And so yeah. it's so important that I love hearing this, Stephen, that inspires me so much. And, and, and we have a lot of people who reach out to us that yeah. on the Heal Squad or part of the Better Together community who are alone and just carrying so much weight with people that are taking care of and family members and it it, it just it breaks my heart and and it's it the more that communities can come together and the more like like that what is it called steven next what next door community. next door next oh. door like yeah. community posting board yeah i so love it cool. i mean the more that stuff can be available where we can all because there are a lot of good people who want to help yeah there are good people who want to contribute there are good people who've you know they've done it they've you know i think of i think of um uh, uh, Norma, uh -huh. cleaning you know, up the street. Who, up mm -hmm. the street. Well, also like their kids are grown up and yeah. like so they're available. Yeah, you know Norma used to come here and walk with yeah. Ma Maria's mom because her kids are grown up and you know. Well, I was gonna I say mean, too. I'll tell you the happiest. The happiest after buzzers were the ones that did stuff like that. Like Johnny Laquasto would always go and run blood drives and give blood. <sighs> uh, Stefan Wallace every Saturday was doing uh, Skid Row Saturdays oh. and feeding people like looking back now when i see the common thread between the happiest yeah. people and after buzz right they were the ones going out and doing things for other people especially in la which is such a Oof. harsher place yeah to be. note to everyone in la i think you know, steven now you're away from it so you're seeing it um i don't know if we can fix that in la you know as a whole because between the amount of transients coming in and then the amount of narcissists coming in for their dream i want to be a star i mean it's a, and then the weather makes it so it's like peace out and going to the beach mm -hmm. so it it's and then it's so big so it makes it really hard so if you are out there you do what stefan did oh my god like i i this why i miss i after buzz you know i miss our i miss the you know seeing it was the host like that who inspired me but yeah i remember stefan um working you know with the skid row people and by the way i never saw stuff out without a smile mm. <laughs> i just and and always working yeah. booked in all these major commercials like well i think you guys you know, talking about this that's what i wanted to say is often i feel like we look for the negative right i think there really are a lot of people yeah. who are doing this and who are giving to others and i think that this pandemic um has made people slow down and made people aware of the hardships we're all going through oh it's heavy yeah I and so it. i do i do feel like there are a lot of people who are serving and helping others and we, we need, just have to well, look for that media hello can we just start shifting i'm hoping the next gener we can educate the next generation yeah. not this one Agreed. and if you're in this generation doing the media come on you know like can we cover more of that stuff you know i know and I, I know clicks is money so you know you, you get a click off mm -hmm. of the train wreck but Anyway, I will right. say though, if you're going to talk about clicks as money, there is definitely an uptick among millennials and Gen Zers where, you know, I don't necessarily like the motivation behind making videos where you're helping people just because you're trying to get money. But like to make that cool and make that Whatever like a thing, it. yes, you know, like every inch, I'd say the upside kind of outweighs the downside. Right. Listen, right. If that's whatever their intention is, listen, we know a lot of, I know a lot of um, coaches and healers that you know camera goes off not not really living what they preach and not the nicest of people but their mess doesn't mean that their message isn't sound mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean that um 
we want to devalue what they're what they're accomplishing and the positive things they're doing for people. So like those, I'm all for those kind of videos, Stephen. All right. So, uh, and again, what this was thrown at me at the last minute to be doing this show today. You're doing great. You're doing great. Well, because of you guys. Um, so it's time. Is it time for? For our. What? Duncan Bray. There you go. So you guys, really sad news actually. Well, first we have to dance. Sad news is today is our last and final day no. of Duncan. Why? I know. Mm. Obviously, we're still going to keep talking about it. We all love Duncan. Maria loves Dun Duncan more than anyone I've ever met in my entire life. <laughs> but she's very genuine and Maria authentic is a about ride it. Ride or die, Duncan. She is. So, obviously, we're still going to continue talking about it, but it is our last day. So I think for our last day, we should all go around and talk about something that we found through this Duncan partnership that we wouldn't have got on the menu. We didn't know about. I think that'd be really fun. Well, you know me. I know I you. I am Captain Consumer. Okay. And I will say when Stephen Lemieux and I popped into Dunkies on the mm -hmm. way when he was going back to uh, NC, uh, we went and bought some tchotchke. And I will say the discovery of some of their um travel mugs and the, the yeah you have the black one which is just queen badass it's incredible right and then Keeps i have the gold right mm -hmm. but then i got the smaller one mm -hmm. with the white and and by the way I, i'm so into their colors yeah you know what i mean like this, mm -hmm. these colors have been around for decades yeah and they really work the they do. the the orange and the pink and then the one, I don't know, this is really weird, but the but the mug has a little yellow in it too. It's so cute. Right? Isn't uh -huh. it amazing? And mm -hmm. it, it's so, anyway, so I'm like going to say that was my, toy. what's that? They had the dog toy thing, like the little Duncan Cup dog toy, chew toy, which is amazing too. <laughs> yeah. So fun. I, so Great background, my, Steven. Because I've always been a, mm -hmm. a I like, I, I'm a bit of an over consumer. So I, I like, that. I like all their products and, but, but that was a new find. Fun, Steven. What about you? Find anything fun? I didn't know that the bagel bites had cream cheese in them. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I thought they were just mini bagels, and I wasn't really that interested. But then when you guys oh. talked about the cream, you're like, "Oh god, I gotta go try those." Hilarious. Yeah, they're pretty addictive. They I, really I don't are. know if I could live in Connecticut because there's a Dunkin' on every corner. Do you like the everything or the plain? I'm a big fan of the everything. Same with Maria. Because Kevin I, likes. The I plain. gotta have everything. Yeah. I'm I'm yeah, a millennial. That's I gotta say. Have everything. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's good. You know what I found that I because I'm not a coffee gal because it is too crazy on my stomach. Well, we have some issues with your tum tum. Right, but they're refreshers, you guys. They're green tea refreshers where you could do. I did the peach one, phenomenal. They're delicious. They're refreshing. A little pick me up. Um, yeah, that was. I think that was it for me. That was it. The refreshers and their sandwiches. Are also really really good. Yeah. So, I, okay. The protein sandwiches. So good. Yeah. Right. If you have to do some drive through. Yep. Boom. Yep. That's enough to get you going. A hundred percent. All right. I'm in. We love it. So and then, by the way, I will tell you, there's no goodbye to Duncan's. No. What I'm no, looking no, no. forward to, Kelsey. Tell me. I have been scouting a few key D and D locations wow, for our. That's yes. right. So when mm -hmm. you know when things loosen up a little bit, there's a couple of really good. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts that we can go and work at because I'm big on that. I'm big on leaving the office yeah, and going to a different location and yeah. working just to just a little change of scenery. I and think that's uh, great. Uh -huh. and and I think because we don't have a lot of Dunkins out in L.A., we do here. And there's a couple real you know, nice, cushy, well lit. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I like yeah. that. And I have to say too, you guys, they are they just launched their cold foam. So we're, I know. So we're gonna have Kevin try that because you can put it on any cold brew. It just gives it a little zhuzh, a little happy. It's gonna be good. We're already was, already calling it the drink of queens. The drink of queens. So, so listen, you know, in Maria's absence, which um, we're gonna talk about um, on our next show, we won't be. Uh, we will be here tomorrow for Regular Guy Fridays. Of course. That's a very regular show. As you know, and thank you for all the well wishes, and thank you for not trolling us to Maria because mm -hmm. she will cut us. She <laughs> she will cancel us. Um, but in uh, she is she's out today, and uh, we'll we'll touch a little bit more on it on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, but for now, while we're together, um, 
it was a bit of a mind-blowing week for me with our guests. Uh, I'm relatively new to this show in terms of uh, producing it, and I will say I'm already making much better choices in my life. Um, every single show I have a takeaway, and, uh, you know, the Patreon is giving me even more. Yeah. You know, so I want to just keep encouraging you if um, you haven't already to sign up for our Patreon for ad free content, but then also for those bonus shows and then um, the Heal Squad events that we have, the healing events mm -hmm. where really people come together and have tremendous life breakthroughs. Um, but getting back to how this has all affected me, mm -hmm. I was like that, Kels. You. Did that make it's you feel all about at home? You. <laughs> yeah. As a millennial? <laughs> well, um, definitely. So Maria said, be nice to the millennials. I, I love the millennials. Yeah, be nice to us. I hang out with all you guys. Come on. Shout out to our millennial following. I know it's a lot of you. I got you guys. Yeah, I got you too, though. <laughs> I, I know you I do. I hang out with more millennials than I do people <laughs> my own age. Um, but no, I, I, it, it really, the show, just every single show, I go, oh my God. I and know. it blows my mind. And it's not just on my physical health and my mental health, but even my career. Mm. So I want to spend time going over uh, some of the takeaways from Dr. Hyman, from Nicole Avant, and from Anne Lamott. I mean, just this week alone, uh, each one of them gave me incredible breakthroughs yeah. that I hope you uh, as our audience had as well. I know Stephen and Kelsey had the same breakthroughs, but you know, when a lot of these people are talking and getting that information out there, I'm busy taking notes. Maria's taking notes, and even if she's not physically taking them she's taking mental ones mm -hmm. and we're letting them speak but at the same time there's so much more i want to talk about I know. surrounding some of their philosophies some of their principles and how those philosophies and principles really uh can pay off or do pay off or our personal experiences with them um i want to open with dr hyman mm -hmm. uh, uh this was uh this is somebody who um really got me thinking more about my diet and i know uh, we have a lot of great people on here talking about diet. Yeah, we we hear you are what you eat and all those different things, but a lot of the stuff that he threw at me, I don't know why it pierced me a little bit more. I agree, I agree. He has a way, um, and I've been a Dr. Hyman fan for a minute, so I was really excited for he and Maria to connect because I knew they would. Um, he just puts it in a way that I feel like is not overwhelming. The diet culture is incredibly. A, saturated, and B, it's just like, it can be toxic. And I think that he really just makes it like, no, I want you to use this as fuel to heal, to do, like, yeah, and just makes it really easy for everyone. So I love that and conversation. I, you know what I was saying to Maria, too? I was like, you know, I think some of the stuff, when you hear it, it's overwhelming because you yeah. think you have to do it in extremes. Yep. But I know Maria's book, her, her the diet book mm -hmm. she wrote, she's was always about 80-20. Mm. And you even hear me always use 80-20. Always. People use it in diff for different reasons. I use it in, in football. There's like people in life that can bring that ball down 80 yards. They have that set of skills. And then there's people like for that last 20 can get the ball of the goal line. They have those skills. Mm -hmm. Not that one skill is better than the other. It's just a different set of skills. But in the same way, in 80-20, it's in this case, it's like 80% of the time you eat okay, and then 20% you can play. Now, maybe if you're eating 100% awful right now, maybe it's more like 50-50. Totally. Or even 40-60 the other way. But you start to you know, implement the things from Dr. Hyman. You yeah. start, um, and, and if you get close to 100, great. But most of the people I know that are um, healthy and what I like to say normal yeah. are like 80-20. It's not 100. No, they're because having their your drinks. Mind. Yeah. They're, they're having mm -hmm. their dessert every now and again. Um, I always I think about it as like a week, right? If I have a calendar in my head and I have five red or five green check marks and two red X's, great. I, I mean, amazing, right? right? You know, I mean, I think the the most important thing from Hyman is is the one question. You know, and he says, ask yourself this one question: What am I What am I putting in my body right now? And like after that episode, I really started thinking. I'm like, okay, there's this weird mentality that we have towards food versus other things. When I take an ibuprofen, I think, okay, I'm taking this ibuprofen, better not take it with alcohol, better not take it with this. Like I have so many things in my mind that I'm worrying about. But with food, it's like, oh, it's food, it's good to eat. And it, you don't question it as much. 
And once you start questioning it, you start thinking, oh, yeah. like, this isn't just food. This is a type of yeah. food that can have negative effects well, on me. Well, Steve, this was the first thing I was going to bring up, and it's the specific question that really moved me. So you, you, when you're about to take that bite or make that selection at the supermarket or even at a restaurant, is this food going to hurt me or heal me? Mm -hmm. And by the way, you may not, you may go, it's going to hurt me. Fine. I'll eat it. But I'm telling you just by asking yourself that question, mm, it's going to be a little pause. And I, I, that was the first thing I had on my list. I mean, the other thing that I've heard too is eat a colorful diet, mm -hmm. you know, so fruits and vegetables that are rich in color, have the rainbow, always, you, you can't go wrong with those things. Um, with him, uh, he's very much of the belief that we need to go to the places like Whole Foods and, and such that or if that don't have the pesticides and yeah. treatments. Um, I agree with him, but I also know it's tricky. It's hard. It's tricky. Yeah. But keep trying, you know, keep looking at Thrive and those other places to figure out how you can make it work well and i think too i was actually having that conversation with my mom last night because i do it is hard for a lot of people a lot of people don't have the means right now they have to feed a whole family but think about it this way you can get even if it's not organic potatoes getting potatoes is better than getting some right. like tv dinner right. you know and that's mm -hmm. going to be pretty comparable in price right so just think about it that way it doesn't need to be this like all-in organic yeah, because that you you'll know, get defeated. Yeah, like you start off, you easily. do it for a week or month, and you go, oh, you get exhausted. So yep. I think if you retrain your taste buds mm -hmm. just to be into the whole foods, yeah, um, meaning the vegetables and the fruits and the things like that, yeah, we can get there to that next to the one hundred two of it. But yeah. the one hundred one is what you're mm -hmm. saying. Um, one of the biggest one of the biggest things that I um, like kind of keep in the back of my mind every time I'm grocery shopping. And I can't remember if I learned this in high school from my foods teacher, or if it was an episode of Better Together. I think it was high school. Is that uh, with the way they set up grocery stores, everything in the aisles is unnecessary. All you need, everything that you need to have a healthy diet is on the outside ah. of the aisles mm -hmm. and the vegetable and fruits there. Very interesting. Because everything on in the inside is processed, boxed, canned, yeah. like all these kind of things. You know, it's like someone else you say, I only things pulled from the ground or or if God didn't make it, if, if it wasn't if it was made, you know, by man and not by God, I'm not going to eat it. So that's another tippy through his other thing, which was his book, Pharmacy, Not Pharmacy. So pharmacy, F-A-R-M as in farm um, and going to the supermarket, calling it a pharmacy, you know, mm -hmm. so a little play on words there. But, you know, what are those foods you can buy? That are healing and i'll tell you we got you know we got we we put out a clip about when he talked about f food curing depression and there's some people who you know pushed back on that but he had a study you know he talked about the study of the juvenile um delinquent center he was working with yeah. and how uh suicide 100 percent, you know cure of the suicide rate within the group that he was working with when he changed the diet and then the depression dropped in everybody by 90%. Mm -hmm. um, I know, you know, listen, I, I'm not a, <laughs> certainly not a doctor. So I'm sure there are uh, things in our body chemistry that makes us depressed, but I will say that, you know, processed foods and the chemicals and things like that really can they weigh on you, weigh you down uh -huh. and depress you. Mm -hmm. Um, and where depression and anxiety and mental health is going is is the thing of this century. Yep. Only getting worse. Especially Super the anxiety important. thing. I mean, these what those foods have, the sugars and the um, not even the sugars, but the nasty like high fructose that plays in directly to anxiety. Right. It's going to mess with mm -hmm. your cortisol. It's going to mess with those sort of things. So like Kevin, none of us are doctors, but I think it's a it's a quick kind of first solution to try and see how it changes you. See how it makes you feel, right? Yeah. Yep, 100%. You also, you know when you're eating poorly. Yeah. Like, yeah. even if you don't register it, like, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, you subconsciously are, like, kind of thinking about, like, God, I've been eating, like, really crappy this week. And just even that subconscious energy going to that is bad for you and drags you down. You know, we should have asked him, you guys, and mm. we'll follow up. So we're all working really freaking hard and I know a lot of people are tired and so when you're tired you're craving poor food because your body knows it's going to give you a quick zap exactly so what are the natural things you know oh, I know there's long-term natural question. 
right over long term. But what are those things that I could pop out of my mouth and get a little charge? And I'm sure there, there are things. I've Googled them before because I ask myself that every day. Because All it's, right. We need to figure that out. Yeah, By the I way, know. you guys, please go to uh, at Better Together with Maria. Um, and obviously keep hitting us up there. But if you <laughs> know any of these, yeah. we would love to hear. Um, and you can obviously email us too, right? Or uh-huh. do, yeah, oh, do yeah. they can email us. No, I'm curious. I'm going to follow What's the email? Them. Better Together. Actually, you guys can email info at Better Together with Maria. Yeah, I would love to. Dot com. Would love to I've know. I've read about avocados giving you extra energy. So we should email them and ask them that. Yeah, I would Because like I know. often. Right? Uh-huh. Um, sugar feeds cancer. I, you know, he's a doctor. I'm not. I When I had um, my test to see if I had any tumors in my body a couple of years back, I did one of those body scans. Mm-hmm. And, and what you have to do is you have to starve yourself. I think for a day, you're not supposed to eat. And then they inject you with something. And I just talked to the nurse practitioner that day when I went and said, what is that you're injecting in me? And basically, it's like a glow-in-the-dark sugar, to put it in layman's terms or regular guy terms. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, why is that? She said, well, you're, if you have tumors, they're really hungry right now because you haven't eaten. And what they eat is sugar. So the, so this glowing sugar is going to rush to those tumors. It's going to light those tumors up. Mm-hmm. And now we're going to see those tumors on the scan. So I said to myself, well, I don't need to be a doctor to know that sugar obviously feeds tumors. Yeah. You know, so if you have someone that is sick or has cancer and if they want to be here, if they really still want to be here, um, it's it, it's worth it. Get off the sugar. I know that feeling of like this is their last days. You just want them to be happy. Okay, if that's it, that means we've given up. So give them safe passage. Mm -hmm. But if they still want to be here, if they still want to be here, if they want to fight, let's go. Get rid of all the sugar and the bad carbs and the whole family can do it. By the way, not going to kill the family to everyone unite and eat healthy. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, like, I'm glad he said it. I knew that, but I'm glad he said that because, you know, hopefully people listen to him. I think to the thing, Kev, to keep in mind is like the different kind of sugars too because also people get easily scared of like fruit sugars and this and that eat your fruits it's it's the sh- refined sugars it's those is it's the worst the, yeah but even even still like with lead so we didn't do like the tropical fruits which are very right. high in sugar but i'm just saying so for, yeah i'm saying for listen the normal, when yeah. the big c comes guys mm. there's no effing around mm-hmm. okay this is a ticking time bomb you know and but we keep hearing more and more people that through diet and through healing and all mm-hmm. the alternative treatments they're, they're, they're either living with it or they're beating it okay so just something to keep in mind there um it's it's amazing that this wasn't all over the place its knowledge wasn't everywhere 10 years ago i mean the hindsight really kind of makes me sick to my stomach when i think about because i've lost three relatives to cancer but now steven it was it, it was. even today it's around and we we were told by the best of the best yeah mm-hmm. don't I mean, bother my, my grandfather was drinking uh scotch every day to help with his thrush from his throat cancer Oof. and it's just that's pure sugar yeah. like that couldn't have helped and, not and then to you mention, my uncle like, not to mention the alcohol is is going to reduce his immunity like i no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not the it's way just, to i look back and i'm like god like i wish i knew this stuff when my well when and it depends on the person listen there are times guys now we're really going to go down another path i will only tell you from personal experience with this stuff there are time where there's a time where someone's soul is tired mm-hmm it makes me cry when I think of it because I think of the people I've known and their souls were tired and they were saying they wanted to be and they wanted to fight but I just knew it was just time yeah. and so sometimes it depends on the person if the person is like you know I want to be here I want to be with my children my grandchildren wh- whatever the case is and I'm willing to go all in then you know what then great let's do it but there are people who you know they're tired and they it they may not say it but they're ready to move on. And for those people, safe passage, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> donuts and pizza and, you know, just enjoy those last moments. But like I said, for the people who want to be here um, and, and, and you, you know, have that fight in them, I can work with that all day long. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as the supplements you need, I thought that was fantastic. He listed, um, was it magnesium? Mm-hmm. What else did he say? Fish oil? 
Fish oil, magnesium, vitamin D, which Dr. Oz also talked about vitamin D. Mm -hmm. Um, And for those of you, I know we had a few comments on the YouTube that said he went super fast under what um, brands he liked. He talked about pure encapsulations, which I've used before. They're a little bit pricier. This is Dr. Hyman. mm -hmm, Yes. mm -hmm, But they're definitely ones for those higher end, or not higher end, but like the important ones that it's worth looking into. I think the supplements is really important. We're going to put up... um, we're going to put, we'll post this. Mm-hmm. We have the clip where he goes over. Did we post yeah. it yet? Mm-mm. Okay. So we'll post a clip where yeah. he tells you all the supplements. Yeah. And I, I should have written down here. I apologize, guys. But I will say, I think why I like supplements is I, being a regular guy, mm-hmm. you being a regular gal, mm-hmm. we're on the go. We're trying to make things happen. We don't have chefs. We don't have cooks. Definitely. We don't have time. So that's why I love supplements yeah. because you can take these supplements you know, in addition to whatever you're eating, mm-hmm. and at least you're going to get something your body needs. And I, I will say, ironically, if, if you can limit the poison you put in your body, yeah. these supplements will do the trick. Totally. And well, and I feel like, a, a, you know, I feel like with today's, if, if the ones he recommends, I feel like we'll do, we'll do the job. I mean, yeah. maybe even better than some fruits and vegetables. Like Dr. Oz was saying, you can't even get vitamin D. He goes a little bit from mushrooms, right. but you can't get it from a... Uh, uh, and I was going to say off that, most people, it's some crazy stati- statistic, but it's a very high percentage of people that are deficient in vitamin D. Vitamin D helps with mood, helps with everything. And so by the way, the number one block of Corona. Right. And I learned today, actually, you guys, while on my doctor appointment with Dr. Littman, who has been on the show before, you have to take for vitamin D to... Um, go into your system to like actually work well to absorb well you have to take it with a fat i didn't know that so i was taking i'm deficient but i take vitamin d every day and he told me you got to take it with a fat so fun little fact for you right there from another one of our great heel squad and your fat is avocado exactly perfect exactly or an almond butter you know right so yeah all right i love it Mm -hmm. um so moving on to you know, N- Nicole Avant. Oh, um, so good. It, yeah, you know this. This is why I love this show, and I uh, and I do. I learn to trust the universe more and more and more because I, I will tell you how I can't tell you how many times in Hollywood I'll have a meeting on the books and I'll go, oh, "What is this meeting for? Why do I have to go there? Oh my god!" Like that, that, that. and I go, and a hundred percent of the time, I'm like blown away with something. Five yeah. percent. So, so you know, Nicole is if. Is a, she was promoting a film. So I was okay, you know, the Hollywood filmmaker. Great, I'm a filmmaker. I love it. You know, I would have asked her all geek film questions, but Maria being Maria, they got into it. And my goodness, I thought one of our greatest guests. Me too. And unbelievable, incredible takeaway. She produced the film Black Godfather, but she was also the U.S. ambassador to the Bahamas, the youngest, I believe, mm-hmm. uh, in that position. And she just dropped so many little gems look at yourself like an atm machine ask who's pulling from you and who's making deposits Mm. and you know when you really start like i know it's easy for us to look at our diets right and we can look at like our habits Mm -hmm. we're not working we're not moving a lot we're not working out a lot okay fine but man i'm really big on energy and the people we bring around us and if you have toxic people around you angry negative people mean people yeah unethical people all of that stuff it is like um, you're trying to live life, but honestly, like carrying a, a backpack of like 300 pounds. Yeah. You know? Yeah. One, well, Kev, we talked about this a couple months ago. I think that we, unless we're in tune with energies in ourselves, we don't realize how sensitive we all are. So little so Kelsey, we were in L.A., you know, working and we're, mm-hmm. you know, Leeds is in one hospital, Cost is in another hospital. Poor Maria is like running all over the house. I had just done this massive renovation that I just finished alone because everyone around me got COVID and I had to make move all the furniture out of our, the Cost and Leeds' house to, to our house to, you know, mm-hmm. get that room ready, get it hospital ready, all this stuff. And we had a, an assistant, we hired like a temp for the day to come in and help. And I just said, I remember going to Kelsey like after a couple of days and saying, Kelsey, I don't mean to like be negative or vent, but this person, like I, I just, I can't put into words. And, and 
I, I don't it, it just making me very uncomfortable and just and so Kelsey then said I said, Kevin, we are all so sensitive to energies. I also said, I have cried. I don't know, maybe a, twice this past week. We were all going through a lot. Right. But still, still, we're so sensitive to energies. And this person was so negative that it was just sucking everything out of all right. of us and just making right. us like so depleted. So that, yeah, we were crying. We were negative. We were. So you guys really have to. Start checking that. Yes. Are people depositing into your ATM or withdrawing? Withdrawing. But then here's the big one, guys. This is the big one. The old me, the civilian uh -huh. Kev, not the samurai. Right. Civilian Kev would would do everything to work around mm. that person. Mm -hmm. I just would create workarounds. Okay, we'll have her go work in this room. We'll work in that room. We'll do that. We'll do... That was the old me. And I feel like... um a lot of people out there who are younger and are grinding, that's what you're doing. You're just finding workarounds. Totally. You're rationalizing. I, th I did rationalizing. it. Rationalizing. This me was like, thank you, Kelsey, for that gift. I never thought of it that way. And then it was by Felicia. <laughs> you know, very sweetly, like, this is just not working out. And yeah. thank you very much. And, you know, we appreciate what you've done. But we will be separating mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden the whole energy shifted really and i'll did. tell you even on movie sets i remember having a um on the two movies or i've made a bunch of movies but the two features i've made but even the shorts you know every time i've had to remove somebody there was one person that we fired and the energy changed on the set was incredible and, and immediately right but immediately and, mm -hmm. and and again less evolved people myself included we just i didn't know why everyone was happy but now as i've gotten older and you saying that i realized like you take out that dark energy mm -hmm. and all of a sudden mm -hmm. everyone's a little happier a little bouncier a little and so if you have that in your life you know i can't say enough to get away from it if you are that person and you're hearing from other people that you are that person Ooh. do something about it choose again Choose as Gabby again. said, you know, when you have these dark thoughts, or work on that, guys. Come on. Mm -hmm. And part of it will be your diet. Start cleaning that stuff up. Like, yeah. don't be medicating. Don't be, you know, like, don't, please, if you're like medicating around the clock or heavily or drinking, it, tr trust me, it's all going to affect you yeah. and keep you in that dark spot. Well, and I think too, Kev, just touching on that really quick, I think we need to be aware of how we're like unloading our complaints and are yes. this and are that maria's talked about it when she was Ooh. doing dancing with the stars and coming home and was like not in a good place her ribs uh, her feet everything yeah. it was just offloading everything onto you and you were like uh, uh, do you even want to be here with me like what the well, heck um, <clears throat> it was pretty much a decade <laughs> <laughs> you know right but uh but we need and i mean i'm sure a lot of you like i check myself when I do it with my mom you know I'm like oh my god I'm so, I'm so sorry because I know people who have done that to me and it just puts you then in a bad mood and you're like I was in a great mood until you yeah, just unloaded yeah. everything yes. on me yeah. so we really need to be checking who we're emoting to who no, we're and I do it, to I do it sometimes too when mm -hmm. I know with friends and I start complaining and, talk, yeah. and I go no I gotta stop you know I have to stop so you know okay how do we get rid of these people well Nicole great lines where she was just like you know first of all you can release people uh with love rather than through but but okay so fine so we've heard that cliche before but i love how she specifically said rather than through conversations arguments confrontations all this like need for closure no 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 just release them in your heart Oof. you don't have to like have the the oh let's go meet at the coffee shop and we're not going to be fr like no you don't have to now if you do and fine, if that makes you feel better, works for you, great. You don't have to. You can just say it, it with love in your heart, like I just wish you well, and and love and kindness. But 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 we're not a fit anymore. Mm -hmm. And then she, you know, another she kind of used the train, uh, train and train stations as a, a metaphor. But she's like in the train ride called life. Uh, not everyone needs to get to the next station with you. Your train can keep on going. So you so know yeah. that. You know, we're all, you know, doing our lives. And you know what? That, like, friend from, like, high school, you know, that you maybe, or college, or family member, that doesn't make you feel good, makes you feel bad about yourself, you know, blocks your dreams, or just is just exhausting, or an energy vampire, whatever the case is, like, 
you know, they don't have to, the, the next train stop, the next year, five years in your life, wherever you're going, they don't have to be there with you mm-hmm. on that ride. Mm-hmm. N- you know, we all think, that, I can't tell you how many times, like you raised us like a Boston Italian. And I, you know, I reference that a lot. Why? Because that's what I am. <laughs> and that's all we ever heard was be loyal and, and remember where you came from and, and never, and you always are loyal and you stand by. And you see that I do it to the point of dysfunction. Yeah. But hearing this, it's like, you know what? Like, you know what? We're good. We had that then. It was nice. But well, now my life is over here. People in your are in your life for different seasons, right? For different purposes. They don't need to be there through thick and thin. Some do. Some or, will but be. But I think even they don't need to be there at the next phase. Right. You know, at the next season. You, again, mm-hmm. you can release them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Go ahead. How, how have you been you know, stopping yourself from, from going into those patterns again, because I know with you, it's more, you see the good and potential in people so much. So you kind of, you, at the expense of the now, oh, you plan know. for the potential. I'm not good at Steven. And it's not just sometimes seeing the good. It is that like sense of loyalty. I think of the good times I had with this person or the time they were decent to me. Or then if that doesn't work, I think they have no one else and God put them in my path. Um, and then I've learned, and this goes to what Sahara Rose had said, this is the shadow side of my generosity mm. where it's, this is where it's too much. I go too far and who knows, it probably builds my ego to be the hero, right? It fills my cup. It distracts me mm. from the things I need to be doing. The, the, the books or the script, the, the projects I need, I should be doing for myself. But you know what? It's okay that I'm not... Uh, making a huge great film i'm helping people steven you know what i'm saying so mm. this is the stuff again thank you better together that i'm learning and going mm, it's really hard i i have three or four former hosts right now from after buzz that are doing great things in the business and every week they say this week and i'm like i, I can't like i'm right and especially what's going on right now it's really hard um i have two studios i promised well, Roxy's one of our my probably my best friend. I, I you know she's just, she's making a move. I'm helping her move from here in Connecticut, but yeah, it's I don't know, Stephen. It's I have to work at it. It's a lot. I have to work at it. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll say I'll say it's been very valuable for me to experience everything though. Just even even the past ten years, what we went through of like seeing how energy can affect other people, whether it's my own or whether it's the people we work with, and kind of how even if somebody's a good worker it can overwhelm yeah. the negatives can overwhelm the positives One, of that right and you know my lesson learned Stephen, and i don't know if you share this but when i think of those people we work with who are amazing workers but were totally dark it wasn't worth it no. it wasn't worth it Stephen. it really wasn't we should have you know made those changes because i mean did, i think that's you know, that's something that i think is extremely valuable for me to have learned so early in my in my life yeah because I think that it'll save me a lot of pain later yep. if I am running a business or if I am working with yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hire for hard, train for skill, you mm-hmm. know, all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I, yeah. Well, there's a deeper dive on that. We, I want to be able to get to um, Anne Lamott, which, who also blew me away. But before we do, I also loved uh, someone as successful as Nicole told her story about um, she had an, you know, her husband it runs all of Netflix. Okay, he's like, I would say the most powerful guy in our business, only because Netflix is so successful, and he's the architect. He's been the architect of it, the main one, if not the architect, Ted Sarandos. Mm. So imagine what their parties are like, right? Mm. So who's who? Everyone's there. So the toilet clogs, and what I love about Nicole, which is like Maria and me, she runs in there to unclog the toilet. They can't, but they've got a house of just jammed of guests. And this is the toilet everyone's using. So like they call their plumber, he rushes out, and the plumber's completely starstruck because he sees all these like stars. And um he's like, I'm sorry, I'm just really blown away. He's like, I mean, you know, and, and of course Nicole being Nicole is like, Oh my goodness, thank you, you're here. You know, he you know, he he she was just so excited to see him and he said, however the conversation went, he said, But you know, I'm just a plumber. And Nicole stepped in and said, you are not just anything. And in fact, I will tell you right now, you are the most important. See all these important people out here? We've got former presidents. We've got 
A-list movie stars. We, yeah, you're the most important person right now at this event. It's like you are, and so her message to him and to us was, "You are not just anything. Mm -hmm. We are all here to serve, and we're all serving in our way." And we talked about this on uh, Regular Guy Friday. Yeah, we did. But the reason I got all of that was Nicole had inspired me so much. Mm -hmm. She's like, you know, she's like, I look at architects, engineers, doctors, lawyers, baristas, uh, clerks. I look at them all and I say, thank you for all of you. And I look at them with gratitude. And I was like, wow, wow. So anyway, everyone's important on the wheel of life. Amen. Um, and I thought that was great. And she, she also said, it's not trial and error, guys. It's trials and tribulations. So as you go through life, you know, don't even say trial and error, trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. So uh, Nicole Avon, and you know, she's so special. She doesn't even bother with social media. I know. It's like I wish we could help her more. I know. Um, and maybe Stephen will cut the clip and we'll send it to her. Yeah, you know, we'll just we'll, it we'll just them. email her. But she's a really, really special soul. And it's funny. I'm sure she's going to produce more, but I think there's going to be more she's going to do for the world. Yeah. You, you, we're just scratching the surface. So if you guys didn't see that episode, I know that um, she was probably not one that you guys were like, oh, I recognize her name. Mm. I'm. I need to watch. You Trust need to watch. Me, Trust us. Yeah. You know, so you know what I just realized too, which is kind of interesting, is that like you know how you hear about whether celebrities are good or bad people, like through the grapevine, or any, people like to say like, mm -hmm. oh, that person's a nightmare. It's never the interactions with other celebrities that are judging that. It's always what people have heard about their interactions with with everyone else who's who's doing their own thing. Yeah. Like the plumbers and the waiters and the things right. like that. Totally. Well, you know, I have a little technique that I, I, I learned. I actually picked it up from Adam Carolla because mm. he would say there's certain big celebrities he would work with. It was, I think it was a question between two major stars, which one he liked better, who are rivals. I'll let you figure out who. I just don't want to say because I don't want to be smart to anybody. But there's two big uh, guys who in our business who hated each other and most of the people took the side of one guy mm -hmm. but Adam said well I happen to know the other guy he's like and I well uh, here's what I'll tell you he was like I I the, I find a good way to judge them is through the people who work for them mm -hmm. he's like the one guy that you all love his people are terrified they're terrified of him. They're terrified to make a mistake. Then I go over to the other guy and his people are down to earth, happy, relaxed, you know, and he's like, hmm, leave it to like Corolla. Mm -hmm. He's just so wise. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, I really, I watch when I see some of my super successful friends. I watch, I, I've told you this, Stephen, before, I watch how they treat waiters. So my friend Andrew Lee, who owns Jerry Lee, and my friend Stephen Berman, who owns Jack Specific Toys. It's like they treat it, all the waiters, first name basis, how are the kids, this, that, and the other thing. I mean, they're so wonderful and generous, but wonderful with their time. Then Sam Nazarian, who uh, owns, um, God, all the steakhouses. I mean, like it's kind of S Everything. SBC, I think. I was confused, SBE and SBC. Anyway. Sam, he'll take us to uh, Nobu. He owns the Nobu in Beverly Hills. And same thing. Stephen, like the bus boys, like the dishwashers. Sam, hey, Frank, all that. He's like punching them in the stomach. They're hitting Aww. him. And just, I, you know, and, and so um, sometimes that's a great barometer of seeing how they treat other people. Yeah. You know, how they treat the regular guy and the regular gal. Mm, that's right. You know, and if they see them and they see their value. So interesting. Um, because I know we're going to run out of time. Anne Lamott, another one who I was like, okay, she's a, I love her as a writer. Yeah. And I'm like, and I'm a writer. So I'm excited as a writer, but better together, really? But Jeff Graham, a.k.a. Jeff Scam. Yeah, Jeff Scam came in for that one. And I, I will tell you uh, what a beautiful soul and what I loved about her was um, she was perfectly imperfect. And unapologetically herself. Yes, which we've seen. 
but and I see a lot of. Quirky... But by the way, I see a lot of that. The reason I don't commend that your generation does is because I see a lot of assholes who are unapologetically uh, right, themselves, right. and I'm like, no, you actually need to apologize and start being polite <laughs> and decent and shut your mouth. So, uh, yes, she's that. Mm. What I'm saying is, um, perfectly imperfect meaning. She's a former addict. Mm. She's bumping her head. I was actually saying to Stephen, she's it's someone like that who she's admitting where she's still making mistakes, but she's just doing her best. And I thought that was very inspiring. And then the actual things in the practices so helpful to your life and like opening up like um, we're Easter people living in a good Friday world right now. Mm-hmm. And then once you explain like, can you, you elaborate on that for, well, I'm not, um, for us, non, uh, I mean, Religious listen, I was people. an altar boy and I'm, <laughs> I went to a Catholic college. I'm by no means a biblical scholar. But, you know, Good Friday was the day that Jesus was killed, right. according to, you know, the faith. And right. um, three days later, he rose again mm-hmm. on Easter Sunday. And so Good Friday is kind of the dark day. When we were kids, they'd always say, see how it's cloudy out today? You usually oh, don't, see a, you don't see a Good Friday that's sunny. That's what they would tell you because it's the day that Jesus died. Got it. And anyway, and I think so. Yes, it's darker times now, but but we but we're Easter people. We're Easter people, mm-hmm. which and what's Easter about? And that's why she's so funny too. She's like, yes, it's about um, passage of death and then resurrection, mm-hmm. which is great in rejuvenation. But then she was like, it's it's about green mm-hmm. Easter grass, mm-hmm. and then what? Chocolate, Amazing. And, you know, and, and Amazing. colored eggs, and so col- so that's what she meant. But I kind of was like, oh boy, this is going to be an interesting ride. Yeah. Um. I think if you're if you whether you're a writer or somebody even trying to build your own business, I love the um, just write the book you'd love to come upon. Mm, I do too. You know, do the build the business you would actually use. When I tell you, you guys, how many times at AfterBuzz I would ask hosts, "Would you listen to this show that you're pitching me right now?" No, no, be honest. Be honest. Not with not starring you. Starring the other, see the four hosts in Studio C? Those four hosts I'm going to throw on this show. Would you really, really, is this really what you would give an hour to watch? Um, I don't ever thought. No. <laughs> so it's really, to me, that was like mm-hmm. great advice as a writer. Bigger advice overall, hopeless doesn't mean powerless. Mm. So... We, again, going back to I better get with Maria. We'll get a lot of DMs from people who are in hope, seemingly hopeless situations. Yeah. Some and some heavy, uh, very heavy, mm-hmm. and you know. But I love that you're not powerless. You still have something to do. And yeah, you're right. And what the one word she kept saying over and over was, "You can surrender." But even with that, she's like, "That is not a loss of power, and that is not weakness. That is simply putting down your weapons." And I'm going to go choose and fight with the winning side. Mm. That's power. Mm-hmm. That's not being powerless. And it's funny because t- today relates to Maria and what we'll talk about Monday. But I was hearing from people around Maria about this word surrender. 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 I'm like, wow, Anne said that yesterday. Of course, that's the universe and that's today, better together. Uh-huh. Um, that's funny. I I half picked that up yesterday. But the way you just put that like really, really hit me. Because I really do think so many people right now feel hopeless and feel like they can't do anything. And she was like, yes, you can. Yes. You have every, you have all the power with someone who, quote unquote, is not hopeless. You have all, like, you have the same power. So let me get into the specifics that yeah. she gave. She talked about creating a hope force field. Yeah. How do you do that? She's like, go find someone else who has no hope and give them hope. Oh. Because now... Service. If you get, but but also, let, let me be specific, which I thought was brilliant. Now, okay, Kelsey, my life is hopeless right now. Mm-hmm. Let's say, right? Example, mm-hmm. and I come upon you. Your life's hopeless. I come and bring you hope for your life. Now, what do we have? We have hope. Mm-hmm. So how can my life be hopeless? How can it all be hopeless when I see hope here? Right. And she said, and now you're creating a hope force field. Ooh. And now you start building. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was that's great, incredible. Yeah. Um, 
one of the things that she said that really spoke to me was how she believed like when when people say some say good things about your work you automatically kind of brush it off but when somebody says something negative you're like oh that really spoke to my soul and that's what you really take away mm, from yeah. and so she she really kind of nails down the point of everything is from within in terms of the satisfaction you should get from your work and the satisfaction you should get from creating shouldn't be based on what the people outside of it are saying whether that's positive or negative right it should be you. the fulfillment that you get from doing that mm -hmm. and she gave the example of uh of john right uh kev no 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 paul williams so so paul williams. i'm gonna bring that up Stephen. thank you so self-esteem is an inside job that was her way of putting it and again now we've heard this before it needs to come from within or whatever okay I, so a lot of stuff i know it's cliche you are what you eat like we said earlier so it really is hard to resonate. Um, and this one's tough, too, because these are highly successful people that are she 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 noted um, that were able to discover this. But I can find I think we can find ways in which we can make it relate to us. So so Paul Williams is an award winning uh, composer and songwriter. And your parents, Kels, would know mm -hmm. a lot of his music. Mm -hmm. um, he's a wonderful man, also was an addict back in the day. I've heard him on interviews. I've always loved this guy. Well, the night he won the Oscar, you know, he was talking about always feeling empty inside, not fulfilled, not fulfilled, not fulfilled. So how many of you listening right now, and and, and I wish I could see a show of hands because I'd probably see more than half of you say, you don't feel fulfilled mm -hmm. in your life. And when Paul Williams was asked, so you finally win the Oscar. Like for us, that's the Super Bowl. Like in our business, that's the greatest award you can over get. everything uh -huh. else. And um, he said, yes, I felt filled, dot, 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 for 24 hours. And um, I want you guys to think about your victory. Sure, you might not have won, won an Oscar, but I'm sure you've had your highs. But how long did it really last? So when you get like one picture you post and you get all these great likes and mm -hmm. comments, how long does it really last? And that's not what's going to fulfill you. So you can keep on that wheel thinking it's going to happen, then maybe getting super successful like Maria, like Lisa Bilio, who also was wonderful enough to guest co-host, who s built and sold Quest for $2 billion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> To have them tell you the same thing that, you know, New York Times bestselling author, you know, um, Anne Lamott tells you or Paul William tells you, or you can just now know it for you. It's not going to. It's not going to fill that void. Okay. What will fill the void is giving, you know, but also just really appreciating your work. So Stephen is a filmmaker. And I said, Stephen, the message for you is, what's when you I'll, and you're making like indie films or commercials, but just enjoy it, have fun. When Jeff Graham's making his film mm -hmm. this summer, make this great film, have fun, you know, it just enjoy it, be really happy with the product. And yeah, obviously there's a business end and you want it to succeed. Yeah, of course. But you can't tie your fulfillment and your happiness to that result. And um Again, I think it's something we've all heard, but it's important more people saying it because I think with Instagram, with Facebook, I think there's less fulfillment now than there's ever been. So it's really important to know you're not going to fill that hole with accolades mm -hmm. and achievements and things like that. That won't do it. Yeah. I I don't know. It was, it was it, interesting when you just said that too. I think that the other daunting thing that's come with like social media is like these successes quote unquote are like so fleeting right it's like so fleeting you post you post something and it gets all these likes you're like okay now what next yeah. okay now what next and it's like no that's that's not it well she mentioned the american culture of getting by the way i love our country i'm not that yeah. guy okay i think this is like you know but we've got our potholes we've got to fix them definitely one of them is the 20th century it's just get get yep. get do need better, more, need more, need more. Get and she says, get, 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 because I, I like the, her being a writer, her play on mm -hmm. words. She's like, no, flip it to give, mm -hmm. and then watch the fulfillment come. Yeah.
I mean, I think my my relapse of being creative, Kev, is kind of using that as a tool because for me, I'm I'm so tired of doing things that don't get the recognition, yeah. you know? Yeah. So like even when I'm out here, like I'm reaching out to filmmakers and saying, hey, let me just be on set and help out. Like I'm just kind of in that yeah. place of like, I don't want to create, I don't want to create a project that I'm going to feel bad about if it doesn't get views. I just want to help other people facilitate and yeah. be valuable. Yeah. And it's just like, I just want to feel valuable and make sure that somebody else's project is as good as it can be. Mm -hmm. Cause I think that that's really my talent is I, I'm good at making, punching things up and it's making one, them. Steve, it's one of, don't limit yourself to one of your talents. And it may right now be your greatest talent right now, but yeah. yeah. That's wonderful. I, just, I, I, I like, love it. I like knowing that a project's as good as it could be, because I had a hand in fixing whatever it could have been fixed. Yeah. And Stephen, you just made a really good point that I like. I feel like we so often, and I was thinking this even when Kevin was saying it, it's like, okay, so we give, but are we finding what we really want to do? Are we finding what's going to fulfill us? When you're giving, like Stephen was just saying, him giving is actually like what he wants to do if that makes sense it's like he's giving because he knows he has a gift in like film and being able to like up people's production it's like so him giving is actually fulfilling him because that's like his real dream and goals and desires so it's like i i remember that like that's kind of when i started with you keva after buzz like i was like i'll do whatever you want because mm -hmm. for me that filled me to be creative right it was mm -hmm. like i was so happy to work with like incredible people like-minded people but i was happy to do anything because that did fill me so i don't know i don't know if that makes sense but that kind of just like clicked in my mind okay. it's like not you don't have to just go go give to your friend and like i don't know help them move or this and that give in a way that you think that you can add value because then that really is gonna fill you fill you up well it's like the hope force field right you create hope so now you have hope so you, you create value right. now you have value right exactly um, well, i think giving is a bulletproof vest to criticism Ooh, like when, when I think of what terrifies me is like, you know, you look at Adam Sandler, you look at all these big people who are making these movies and all the, everyone does is just tear them apart. Yeah. You know, it's they, like, and they bring such, so much joy and laughter, you know? Like, so like Kevin, am I going to go spend a hundred thousand dollars to fund a movie, end up in debt and then have everyone tear me down for it? Like, do I want to put that target on my back or like, do I, like do I, I just want to help other people and not have the, not have that responsibility, right. not have that, target on my back for criticism because who's going to go to the guy who's there helping you even if they make a mistake and rip them to shreds right well listen, right? we don't i don't want you or anyone else to be dissuaded to go make that movie but what i love is steven these are the steps to get you mm -hmm. there this is going to build your value then you feel valuable like you know what okay i'm ready to go make a movie and have it fail i bet that's what's going to get you plus all the allies you're going to make all the knowledge gonna you're going to mm -hmm. get and so you're fine. The universe builds karma, right? So Stephen, you're giving to all these people, and like Kev said, you're making these allies. They're gonna come back and help you tenfold, right? And right. the universe is like, Stephen's a badass, and he's been amazing and so kind and helping all these people. Hell yeah, we're gonna help him on his journey yeah. to making this movie. And, and not all of them will, but but some will, mm -hmm. and you'll learn. And so you just keep on keeping on. I love that, Stephen. Kels, w when we talk about some of the microtransactions, she even went over that. Of just little things you can do in your days, mm. like like she was, she talked about um, when she taught Sunday school, bringing kids out to nature, and or just saying we're gonna tape a dollar bill to a water bottle, and we're gonna you know we're gonna hand that to a homeless person. Yeah. So yes, you again because I want to make sure we've got moms, we've got dads on this show, we've got people working three jobs. They don't have time to go like work a weekend on a movie shoot or whatever, mm -hmm. but. There are things you can give to do in your microtransactions. So the one that um, I heard that just blew me away, and I know it blew you away because I want you can talk about it, was her one little technique with oh, with elderly people. Flirting with the elderly. This is probably <laughs> so, my favorite right. thing in the world because, like Kevin mentioned or Maria mentioned yesterday, old people are my favorite thing. They're the best people. They're the best. They're so wise. They're yeah. so incredible. And they're so overlooked. It's ridiculous. So if you see a sweet old person at the store, whether they need help or they're just standing there, tell them that you left their top. Tell them their hairdo rocks. I mean, yeah. like, just flirt with them a little bit. Make them feel good. And that's going to bring them so much joy. And it's going to bring you so much joy. Yeah. Oh, 
they're just the best. They're the best. So like I said, you they don't need to be suffering or they need help. You can just you know, flirt with them a little yeah, bit. I love it. Ask yeah. them, you know, oh, can I pat your dog? Yeah, just, 100%. Just, yeah, just those, it, again, those just little things I thought yeah. was wonderful. She also talked about the power of touch mm. and touching people and, you know, and looking them in the eye. And, yeah. And uh, I think the last thing that um, we should go over, and I know this this plagues, in my experience of coaching, this plagues females, which is the subject of perfectionism. Mm. And she says perfectionism is the voice of of oppression mm -hmm. and um i see it with maria mm -hmm. you know i see it Maria. like I, I can show you other people in our business who churn out one c minus or c plus after another and you know what they are far more successful th than you but you are always trying to have an a plus yeah and what's happening is you're getting sick the people around you are getting tired and you're not getting ahead mm -hmm. you know so I, I see a lot of women, they'll either strive for perfection and get sick doing it, or they won't try at all. Because yeah. they'll be like, well, it, it can't be perfect. I they, Their vision of whatever they want to do has to be perfect, so therefore I'm not even going to get up to bat. Yeah. I'm not even going to try it, my dream. Yeah. And it just breaks my heart. I think, you know? I think it's that we're, and because I know I've been there, it's like we're scared, right? So we feel yeah. like whether it's, in our looks or in our product, it, that all has to be perfect so that we can come into the room mm. with this courage, with where like I see guys who, like you said, Kev, C plus in their product they, and they're like, don't give a shit. They and they just, go in with ugh. all the confidence. But us, yeah, it's, it's piled on and on and on that unless we're perfect in one way or another, we're not going to be able to use our voice and no one's going to look at us and no one's going to care. So, I mean, I, I find myself criticizing other people's work and then stopping myself and being like, well, I didn't do it. And like, I didn't get off my ass and make something like mm -hmm. that. Like, okay, it has flaws, but yeah, you know, yeah. I could have done that and I didn't. So I, why yeah. am I criticizing? I think, but going, going to that, Stephen, like women are scared to get so yeah, criticized. Scared. Like yeah, we, yeah, it's because society, we, we've done this and we have to change. It. And I will tell you, um, it's funny. We worked with a, a bunch of disabled Marines mm. that were missing limbs. And I'll never forget what one lady said. She says, I w just want you to know, um, at the end of the day, you're hiring a Marine. Wow. So, yeah, they might have missed legs. Well, I will tell you, you know, hiring women is, to me, is the same thing. I mean, women mm. work harder than men. They care more. They have more detail. They're more loyal. I'm sorry. I might get killed for saying that because I know it's a blanket statement. And, yes, of course, there's guys who work hard and are loyal that are great but you know that's why i think we're better together by the way you know staffs of men and men. women because we work well we we play off each other's strengths and weaknesses but with women i have noticed a, such a great and strong attention to detail mm -hmm. Wh wow winnie, <laughs> winnie is growling you go girl you go girl thanks we yeah did she's you. sticking up for everybody she agrees um and yeah <laughs> and so i'll say that as to to other employers but yeah to women there's work with needing to yes Winnie now she's growling there's need there's a need to get over this thing of perfectionism and she gave a great I'll take her you got her yep okay give me a sweetie bear oh witches oh, watch now she'll just go on my shoulder and she just falls right to sleep I okay know. we do our little hold here mm-hmm let's see put my elbow on the table and then yeah. oh, that's wait. what I do when I'm on my computer she just sits with auntie uh -huh. um I was going to say she had the great example of like, think of your favorite book. There was a first draft of that book mm -hmm. and it was probably awful. <laughs> and I'll tell you as a writer, there, it, any if, if a writer tells you his first or her first draft is amazing, then they're delusional. Um, it takes many, many drafts. So whatever you do, you're going to have to, it's going to be imperfect and that's okay. And you're going to work at it whether it's a business, whether it's your dream, you're going to stumble, you're going to make your mistakes. It's okay. Just as long as you're open to the evolving and the growth, taking notes from people, how to fix it, you know, you'll be fine. But really, the whole thing with perfectionism, I can't even imagine what it might be like for a mom. I know. And then you, listen, most of your, if you're a perfectionist with your kids, it's based on how much you love your children. But then you got to remember, if you love them so much, you're going to damage them. You know, so, uh, and again, 
You still need to work hard for your dreams. Uh, you still need to do your make your best effort. I'm not saying any of that, but this need for perfectionism, um, it's crippling, and uh, and uh, and I'm sorry, it'd be extreme. It can kill you. Mm -hmm. This is cancer. This Toxic. is this. Yes. So um, that said, I think it was a great week of uh, better together programming. And uh, I know we were very moved by this. If you guys were as moved as we were, please continue to let us know. Uh, at Better Together with, with Maria. At uh, Stephen Lemieux Photo. Is that what it is? You nailed that. At Kelsmeyer 22. Kelsmeyer 2. 2. Not 22. 2. Kelsmeyer 2. Was I there know. a 1? Yeah. <gasps> I know. I the, know. It actually named Kelsmeyer. Uh, yes. This is bringing me back to um, After Buzz days because every time i would say my handle everyone every single panel <gasps> was there a one we should message them that, yeah so there was a one but here's my story you guys I just quickly came, i just came up with i think i have a better one for rebrand okay i'm into it because here's the thing number one you if you were that kid in sports who's like i'm number one you're annoying number two <laughs> The real number one the true hero we talked about that last night <laughs> i know yeah That's i why was my all favorite in sports I was liked because I was a team player. Yes. Would play, Number twos I'd are play, team players. I'd, I'd play defense. I would do all the things that no one wanted to do. And I loved being a backup. I can't tell you Same. times I had to be the backup and come through. Same. I'm doing it right now for Maria, <laughs> you know, and it's like, it's cool. Yeah. It's all right. It's not. Yeah, you're right. It's so number two. It is. It, that's very. Yeah. But it's funny. Perfectionism. You know, Kelsey had a picture of herself when she was three and it's like kind of blurry on her instagram oh, page yeah and i said and you know check out our instagram page because you know i said kelsey you're not owning who you are there's nothing you have a big job you're you're changing lives every day where is that in your description so we changed the description we changed my little profile and, you picture. know and it was time to like grow up and step into the yeah. light and uh and even the pictures it was like uh, one picture was more beautiful than the other and you were no not this one Nitpicky. not this one and i just said kels come on you've got to get in the game and start somewhere you literally have a picture of yourself at three that's blurry <laughs> you think that's better i'm like come on and so you know that was a big step for you and mm -hmm. i'm proud of you thank you because you gotta yeah you gotta step into the light and sure it's not always gonna be great you well, know we all need good mentors and coaches and friends who push us there. So yes. thank well, you, Winnie. That was for you. Your energy brought that though, right, Vincenzo? Right, right. Dad. Okay, you guys. Well, we love all of you. Thank you for being patient with us. We'll update you on Maria Monday. Um, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Is Regular Guy <gasps> Friday. Tomorrow's Regular Guy Fridays. All right, a little tease here, guys. We took Maria to the... Um, it was a little trip to the airport. Yeah. And it turned into Night of a Thousand, thousand queens. queens. So we will give you an update on... Steven's face right now. <laughs> there was Night of a Thousand Queens. You guys. We learned what happens in the Prius stays in the Prius. And I think we're going to take <laughs> a moment tomorrow to define queen. what a queen is. Yeah. What a K-W-E-E-N yeah. queen is. It's so, going to be phenomenal. A lot of good stuff. <laughs> a lot for, of good stuff. Bria's going to kill us. <laughs> a lot of good stuff. For those of you who don't know, it's on the podcast feed only. We are non-video no. for the time. Nope. And we're on Bria's feed for the time. <laughs> <laughs> and it is. It's for the regular it's for the regular guys and gals in an irregular world. That's right. When are we When are we dialing better together back to one day a week and regular guy Fridays? No, to listen. It, regular guy daily. Well, I don't know. Now, potluck Saturday. It's a contender. Yeah. Once, that's a once a month, though. We'll get into it. We'll get into the details. But for the time being, Kevin, would you like to tell people to be nice people? You do it. Oh, my gosh. You okay, you this, guys. Girl. You got this. You're a queen. I got to channel Maria. All right. We love you all. Winchenza loves you all. Yep. Be nice people. Make good choices. And be present. Good out to Kelsey. It was...